All right, here we go. This is episode, I believe, 16 of my Coach Mode Dynasty series on NCAA Football 14. I am the offensive coordinator with Washington State. We are about to play our 11th game against Utah, 11th game of the season. Uh, this is the 2015 season, and this is a big game. Uh, we come in uh, driving towards that that big Apple Cup matchup against our arch rival Washington, which will decide the Pac-12 Northern Division. But first, we have to get past Utah. And Utah, as you can tell, there we've had a better season statistically than the Utes, but talent-wise, the teams are pretty even, and they might actually be a little better than us. And uh, the other, another important thing to look at for Utah is that they are going to be motivated. They come in at 4-6, and six, which means they need to win their last two games against us and then against Colorado to get to six wins and, and therefore qualify for a bowl game. So this is a, they're in kind of do-or-die mode. Uh, they have everything to play for. As for us... We are coming off of our a big win against Oregon, which helped us to to put us into this this uh, one game playoff situation with Washington. Um, and then you've got Utah a team with a losing record. It's kind of it's your classic trap game scenario where you've got a uh, you're playing a team that might be perceived as being weaker, um, but really they're not. They're talent wise, they're on our level. So if we don't show up and and do our job, do our and take care of business then Utah could very well pull the upset. As we look at their numbers, their quarterback, they they are a very aggressive. 24 touchdowns, but 16 interceptions. So that could be good for our defense. Maybe we can get a couple turnovers. Uh, they're not a, a tremendous rushing team, uh, but they've spent most of the season behind, so they're usually having to throw the ball. We are coming in, actually, with uh, Apodaca now is, is on his way to a 5,000-yard season. He does have eight... Uh, interceptions but he's thrown 43 touchdowns so so without further ado we'll go and look at the conference standings here before we start the game actually uh, you can see Washington State Washington one and two and if we lose but then beat Washington you're talking about a potential four-way tie for first place so we want to avoid that we want to avoid a, a log jam situation <laughs> we need to go and beat uh, beat win, take care of our business uh, Oregon, uh, just kind of looking there. They do play Washington this week, so they still have a chance to sort of spoil things. Stanford, um, they're not out of it. They play Cal, and if they beat Cal, that's kind of the end of their conference season. Washington, they play Oregon today. They need to win that game um, before they take us on. And But if us and Washington both take care of business, then that final Apple Cup matchup between us and the Huskies is a default Pac-12 Northern Division Championship game. So, um, so even though you know you're talking about a seven and three and a four and six, you know, teams playing against each other, that might not be your most attractive matchup. There is still a lot to play for. There, there's a lot of intrigue uh, in this game because we do have a chance to to win this uh, win this game, win the division, where we will probably play Arizona State, who still is has only the one loss. If they're able to win their last game against Arizona, then if the thing if things fall right, then in that Pac-12 championship game, they could be playing for an opportunity to go to the college football playoff. They could slide into those final four teams. So we, while obviously we're outside of the college football playoff race and have no hope of getting into that, we we do still have a chance to have kind of an impact on it. Um, we could have a say. We, you know, we could uh, we could spoil Arizona State's hopes of making it to the playoff. And we already have beaten the Sun Devils. That was our first win of this season. So, so uh, there there is a lot of intrigue in this game. I, I went into this very excited. Um, well, and it, I, I took it very seriously. But as you'll see. Uh, Utah took it seriously as well, and we are playing at Utah Stadium. Uh, not a lot of people there, obviously, but uh, that's still it's still a big away game, and it's very cold. You'll be able to see some of the uh, the breath out of the players' hands. And we started the game. We called an audible right away and handed it off to Caldwell, who only picked up a yard. Second and nine here. Apodaca throws into the flats on the right, and he finds Williams, our number one receiver, for 14 yards. So right away, we've gotten the ball into the hands of our top two players. 
It's first and ten now. Apodaca here drops back. He's in a little trouble, but he finds uh, Gabe Marks over the middle. Picks up eight yards. Gabe Marks has had hey, Gabe Marks has had a good season. He's made some big time plays. He's come up in some big moments. And here we go. Trips left. And Apodaca throws long, but it was he led his receiver a little too far. Incomplete, so it goes to third down and two. Send a receiver in motion, and we throw it out of the backfield, and we find Wicks running that wheel route. He picks up 12 yards. So we go first and 10 now into Utah territory. And Apodaca decides to change the play at the line. He saw a matchup that he liked, so he hands it off to Caldwell. Caldwell picks up four. Not a big gain, but a solid gain. We'll take it. That brings up second and six here, Apodaca. Obviously, everybody was covered. Uh, we, you know, we can't see that, I guess. But he, he, rather than force a pass, he threw it out of bounds. So that was probably the smart move. Third and six now. He floats that pass up, and it's deflected. Incomplete. So we punted the ball away on our first drive, but we got it back here. First and 10 now. Uh, uh, Utah did not score. Throw first pass here to Dominic Williams, who gets a f gets four yards on the catch. This time the handoff goes up the middle to Caldwell. He gets five to make it third down and one. Wadaka again changes the play. Doesn't like what he saw, so he gives it to Caldwell, and Caldwell plows ahead for seven yards. Nice gain by T. Andre. Here, Abadaga drops back, looks, fires long to the right, and he's got Craycraft falling backwards out of bounds. Nice catch here by Craycraft. And I'm sure I'm mispronouncing his name, but he turns around, makes the catch as he's falling. Big time play for a first down, and we go now into Utah territory again. Here's the handoff to Caldwell. This time he finds a hole and finds some space and picks up 10. Abadaka here on the screen. Gets it out to, I believe that's Marks. Yep, Marks. We read this one. We actually, this was an audible. Uh, Utah plays that 3-3-5. And so we knew that we were going to try and go with that outside screen occasionally because they would have the middle sort of packed up, which should leave space on the outside. So we knew we were going to be running the smash a lot. We were going to be running some screens outside. And there you see again, uh, this was Woods open out on the side for eight yards. Now we get down inside the, the danger zone. Abudaka here throws into the flat. He's got... Uh, I believe that's Wicks. No, LaFasa, who picks up two yards to get that first down, and now it's first and goal. And here's the handoff up the middle, and Wicks is horse collared, which would now be a penalty, but this is obviously before the horse collar tackle was outlawed by the NCAA. Here, Apodaca throws, finds uh, that's Lewis on the shallow cross route. Lewis makes the catch, but couldn't get it into the end zone. And that would be the end of the first quarter. No score. Very frustrating for us as an offense when we go through a whole quarter without scoring. But hats off to the defense who did not allow Utah to score on their two opportunities. Utah actually took the kickoff, which is not usually teams defer when I play against them. Here we hand it off to Caldwell. But he just didn't take a very good angle. And there, to be fair to him, there weren't any holes. And so Utah gobbled that up quickly. So we were forced to kick a field goal. But we got three points. So three to nothing. Utah would score on the ensuing drive, however. So now we're down seven to three. And there's a pass out of the backfield that Wicks drops. So we go second and ten. Duck it here. Throws across the middle on the slant, and he finds Marks for 12 yards. Marks obviously making a big difference in the early part of this game. Here, Apodaca drops back, throws out in the flat on the right, pick, uh, finds Caldwell, who steams ahead for nine yards. So it's second down and one near midfield. Apodaca fakes the handoff here and throws to Craycraft. 
who was, I believe, running a wheel route, but he was being stuffed at the line, which Utah did a lot of, of uh, bump coverage. And here's there's a throw across the middle to Marks, only three yards on this catch, second and seven. And Apodaca here throws to Wicks on that wheel route, who picks up 10. So now we go first and 10. We're close to the red zone here. And an incomplete pass. So it's second and 10. Apodaca drops back, throws across the middle. Bartolone with his first catch of the game gets six yards. Daka drops back, looks again, throws across the middle. He had Williams, but Williams couldn't pull it in. That was a big drop because now it's fourth down and we had to kick a field goal. Luckily, Bray hits it. So we're down seven to six. We get the ball back. Utah scored again. So we had a minute to try and, and punch the ball into the end zone. Hopefully tie the game with a two-point conversion going into the half is... Utah showing they're here to play today. Williams with a slant uh, makes the catch for 11 yards, first and 10. Throw out of the backfield here. Uh, Caldwell makes the catch. Picks up five yards, second down and five now. Ducket here in trouble, but throws it across the middle and finds Craycraft for 10 yards. First and 10 now, 35 seconds to go in the half. Wadaka throws it away. Here, Wadaka throws back and uh, finds Caldwell out of the backfield who the defend his defender tried to make a play on the ball, couldn't, and so he was able to rumble forward for 11 yards. But clock running down. Here's a slant across the middle, finds Bartolone for 16. First and 10, only 20 seconds left. Clock rolling. Pass across the middle, slant, Washington State calls a timeout. And there the ball is deflected, so it's third down and three. 10 seconds to go. Wadaka fires. He gets the ball down to the three-yard line. Seven seconds left. And we got the snap off. Had a man, but Utah makes a play on the ball, intercepted in the end zone as the clock expired. And so Utah would go into the half leading 14-6. to six. So now we've got a little adversity. Where are we as a team now? Fighting, uh, are we able to come from behind with, uh, at halftime with a halftime deficit? So we start off here. Again, our strategy is to kind of work the sides. Lewis makes the catch, picks up seven yards. A good solid gain. But Utah swarming. And here Utah blitzed literally everyone. <laughs> but we still managed to get a pass off to Caldwell, who picks up six yards and the first down. And here's a ball, long. He finds Bartolone, all alone, past the deep, behind the defense for a 67-yard touchdown catch. Big play there. That's a big way to come out and answer being down at the half. Bartolone, that's a... What good route, good throw, good catch, and made it look easy. Leach decides to have us go for two, so we do. Set a man in motion, and we find Nate Bobo, true freshman, for a three-yard catch to get the two-point play and to tie the game at 14. Utah, though, would answer. They scored, took the lead. So again, we're playing from behind. Pass across the middle to Walter Butler, our tight end, rare appearance. Makes a catch for seven yards. Bartolo 
down here on the little out route. Throws it to Craycraft, who picks up 11. There's a screen out to, uh, who is that? Not Bartolone. That's Craycraft. That's right. Eight-yard catch. Here they left the middle kind of clear, so we ran it, found a hole, picked up another eight yards for first down. So it did kind of feel like Utah had sort of adjusted the way they were playing. They didn't run as much of their base defense. Here's a throw out of the flat to Caldwell. And so they started picking up on like throws into the flat, out routes. We did not have as much space out there. And here's a run, fourth down and one. I thought for sure that we'd punt it here, but the coach said, nope, let's go for it. So we did. Sent a man in motion, the handoff up the middle, and Wicks found, found plenty of space and a huge hole, picked up 15 yards, first down. And now we're inside the 20. Abudaka here drops back. He probably had the slant route, but he waited and threw it into what amounted to triple coverage, and the pass was deflected. Here's Abudaka again. This time he finds the receiver. It's Lewis, who slips a tackle and gets down inside the five-yard line to make it first and goal for the Cougars. There, he just slips that tackle. And also, he <laughs> picked up a block from Utah from another Utah player. So we have first and goal. Apodaca makes a good call here, sees the space up the middle, hands it off. Caldwell finds the end zone. Touchdown, Washington State. And we would tie the game. We get the ball back. Utah did not score. There's a throw out into the flat. Caldwell loses three yards on that play, though. Kind of took a weird turn. Footwork needs some work, I guess. So here, out of his own end zone, Apodaca throws across the middle, finds Williams for a six-yard reception. Third down and seven now. Williams has been relatively quiet, only 38 yards through three quarters. And there's the throw. He finds Lewis this time for 13 yards and a first down for Washington State. And that would be the end of the quarter. So the first three quarters turned out to be a waste of time as now it's all down to the last 15 minutes. And there's a uh, screen pass. To Bartolone only gets one yard. Second and nine here. Apodaca looks. Plenty of time. Finds Caldwell this time out of the backfield for an 11 yard reception. So, first and ten. Apodaca here hits the shallow route to Antonio Woods. As we had some receivers nicked up at this point, so we were getting pretty far down the depth chart. Here's a throw over the top, and he finds Bobo, the true freshman, for a 16-yard reception. Bobo runs a nice route here for a true freshman. Here's the out route on the sail concept. Hauls it in, drags his feet. Nice play. First and 10 now, into Utah territory. Apodaca hands it off up the middle. This is Caldwell. He gets three yards. He's got 41 yards on nine carries. And there's a fake handoff, but he throws it across the middle to Bobo. Again, injuries forcing some of our lesser used receivers like Woods, Bobo. We even threw the tight end in there a couple of times. Here's the handoff to Wicks, who picks up a nice nine yard run. We're inside the 25. Here's a throw on the slant to Craycraft, who kept, makes the catch, gets 15 yards down inside the Utah 10. Yeah. 
So here we go. First and goal. Apodaca throws it across the middle. He finds Hemp Hill. I, I believe this is Hemp Hill's first catch of the year. But it's a nine-yard touchdown reception. Washington State, Washington State takes the lead. Just a nice route, nice throw. Big catch, but Bray missed the extra point. That's the second time he's done that to me. Missed a huge extra point, and Utah would score. They made their extra point, and now we're in, in do-or-die situation. It's all down to this drive. We're down by one. Here we see a catch by Williams for three yards. He drops the ball, but it immediately goes out of bounds. So we have first and ten now. Apodaca throws across the middle, finds Woods this time for eight yards. Second and two. Handoff. This time it's to Wicks. Gets a nice run. He's got 41 yards on the day. Here Apodaca drops back, looks, throws long, and he, the, the man had, I think it was Marks, dropped it. That's a big drop. Second and 10. We hand it off again to Wicks. We're trying not to force things. We're taking what they give. We do call a timeout. So it's third down and two. Big play. Apodaca, like a man, chucks that ball on a laser. Who is that? Is that Woods? Big catch there by Woods. So now we have a first and 10. We're in field goal range. So Apodaca drops back. But he waits too long, and he is dropped. He's dropped at the 36. That would be a 53-yard kick. So this is a must-have play. And again, Apodaca, nice throw, nice catch. We called the timeout probably a little early. We should have let the clock roll down on that, but we it was too late, so we called it. And here's Bray for a possible game-winning field goal. The kick is up. And it's good. Washington State takes the lead with eight seconds. 30 to 28. Big kick. Well taken. Celebrate, my man. You earned it. So now it's 30 28. I don't usually do this, but I, I this was an intense game. So I watched the kickoff and uh, Utah's Hail Mary attempt. But they actually made me pee my pants here as the returner, Oliver, gets the ball to near midfield. And so here we go. Utah chucks it into the end zone. But it's deflected away. Washington State holds on. Gets the win. Big win. We feel like we probably should have been a little more impressive. We should have been able to win this game going away. But even when it, we were in trouble, we kept fighting, kept scraping and clawing and got it done. And that means we still have a shot at winning the North Division. So we'll go from here now, start preparing for the Washington game. Washington, uh, I don't know the result. I didn't advance the week yet. But they uh, win or lose. Uh, if we win, whether Washington wins or loses, all we have to do is win. It really, It really doesn't matter. Even if we lose next week, I don't think we have a chance. I think Washington takes the tiebreaker. Like Washington's playing Oregon today. So if Washington loses, I think they still have the tiebreaker over us should they win. So obviously, you know, we offensively we did okay. Um, 75 yards, 468 yards passing. The, the interception was a big deal. Um, we also were only 6 for 11 on third down conversions. That's actually a good, that's a good number. But for us, we're used to doing, you know, being a little more successful on third down. And, you know, 30 is not a terrible amount of points to score in a game. But it's a little below our average, a little below the goals we set. So um, third down conversions would seem to be the, uh, the guilty party there. And a throw in the end zone that was picked. That should have been a touchdown. So, um, so Apodaca did have, you know, he had a good day aside from the interception. 47 of 60, 468 yards. That's a good day for a quarterback. Uh, even in our system, our running backs got uh, to you know combined they had a total of 90 yards. 
Um, receiving, we were pretty well balanced. Craycraft and Bartolone each had over 90. We had, you know, a receiver over 50 and four receivers close to 40 yards. And injuries allowed us to get some guys like Hemphill and, and Bobo uh, some reception. So, so that was good. Um, it's a big win. It's a gutty win, gutsy win. It's the kind of win that you kind of got to have if you're going to win the division, right? You, you show up and maybe you don't play your best football against a team that you that really has no business being in the game at the end. But you know, we 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 gritted and we got it done, got the win. So, so that means next week, big game against our arch rivals. It's the Apple Cup against Washington. So make sure that you tune in next week. When we uh, we try to win the Pac-12 Northern Division and qualify for the Rose Bowl, so this is Vol Force One, and I'm signing off. I will see you next week. <laughs>